For our Hackintosh build, we already showed you the hardware side of things. We showed you all the parts that we were using, but now I'm going to show you how to install the software step by step. Now, perhaps you're using many of the same components that we're using on our Hackintosh build. And if so, that's a good thing because it makes it super easy. You can just follow this software tutorial all the way through and you should be pretty much good. Now, obviously your mileage may vary a little bit if you use different parts and things like that. So just keep that in mind. Let's get started. You want to start first on your Mac or at least have a friend with a Mac. You want to plug in the recommended USB drive into your Mac and then you want to open up the Mac App Store and here we want to download OS X El Capitan. Now this is a free download, but you will need a Mac to facilitate the download. Once the download is completed for OS X El Capitan, you're going to see this installer window. Just go up to the menu bar and select quit install OS X. Now you need to prepare the USB drive that we plugged in just a second ago. So we want to go to our launch pad, go into the other folder, and then click on disk utility. And there we'll see our external USB drive that we plugged in. Make sure you choose the external drive, not your internal drive. And you can just highlight that and then click on where it says partition. And now we wanna make sure that we have a partition between seven and 32 gigabytes. So to make it safe, I'm just choosing 16 gigabytes for this partition and I'm naming it boot. If you have a larger drive, you will need to partition it so that it's less than 32 gigabytes, but more than seven gigabytes. So just keep that in mind. Now the partition is pretty much completed. So we'll just wait here and then just click done. And now we see our boot partition right there, 16 gigabytes. We're good to go with disk utility. So we can quit that now. Now let's get on to our essential downloads. So open up a browser and then you want to go to this URL. I'll have all the URLs in the description of the video and on the post on 9to5Mac. You want to download UniBeast 6.1.1 and you will need a Tony Mac x86 login in order to facilitate this download. So just keep that in mind. You'll have to create an account in order to download, but the download is free. So uh, now once UniBeast 6.1.1 is downloaded, you can just go back to the downloads page and you want to download MultiBeast El Capitan 8.1.0. Same thing, just click download here and that's going to download MultiBeast. So you have both UniBeast and MultiBeast downloaded. Now we want to go to NVIDIA's page and I'll have that link in the description as well and download the OS X NVIDIA drivers uh, for your Mac. So we'll just click download, agree and download and let those download as well. So basically just three downloads, not a whole bunch of stuff we have to go out and download. Uh, so once the UniBeast download is completed, just click on it to extract it. Now it's time to create the OS X boot disk. So double click on UniBeast, click on open, close out your finder window, and now just click continue once, continue, continue, continue. So continue four times and then click agree. And now we want to select our USB disk. We named it boot earlier. So just select that and click continue. Now click on El Capitan, click continue. And now select UEFI boot mode and click continue. And now you can just click continue here. You don't need to check any of those. And then click continue. All right, now put in your administrator password and then click okay. And this part is going to take a while. So just go grab some coffee and relax for a little bit because I've actually sped this up four times over and it's still going to be fairly long in this video. So I haven't sped up many of the things in this tutorial because I really kind of wanted a one to one uh, comparison so you could actually follow along as I do the steps if you wish. But for this part, I did speed it up four times over. And I think there's one other portion of the video that I sped this up because it's just so long. Uh, so if it takes a while in your machine, don't worry, don't panic. It just takes a long time. Eventually, you're going to see this little uh, finder window pop up and that is normal as well. So just be patient and wait it out.
Alrighty, so that didn't take too long, I guess. Our install has succeeded, so now we can click on the quit button to proceed. So let's just click on quit. And then we see our finder window with the OS X El Capitan and the EFI backups. And then we wanna to go to our downloads and we wanna click on Multi Beast to extract the zip file. And it should create a folder. There we go. We can just drag that folder over to our finder window for our boot disk, just like this. All right. And then lastly, we wanna copy over the web driver from NVIDIA, the one we download it, just like that. All right, so now we have everything that we need to boot up OS X on our Hackintosh. Pretty exciting. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna close out of the finder window for our boot disk, and we're going to eject the drive the right way, or at least try to, in, anyway. <laughs> All right, so uh, we're just gonna click the little eject button in our finder, and then it, click eject all, and it may hang up a little bit on you, but eventually it will eject all the disk and you will be ready to go and we're ready to start on the real fun part. So now let's get over to our Hackintosh. First thing you wanna do is plug in your USB boot disk and then power on your Hackintosh. Right after that, hold the delete key on your keyboard, which will allow you to configure the BIOS settings. So you should see a screen that looks like this. Now, fortunately, there's not a lot that we have to go in here and change, but there are a few things that we want to change up. So use your arrow keys to tab over to where it says save and exit. So we're just going to press our right arrow key all the way over to save and exit, and then press your down arrow key to select load optimized defaults, press return on your keyboard, and then press return on the yes selection, and that will load your optimized defaults. Now we can go back over to our BIOS features section. You wanna press the down arrow all the way down till we get to VT-D, and then press return on your keyboard, and then press the up arrow, select disabled, and then press return again. All right, now one last thing we need to change, boot option one. So let's go back up, and then press return on boot option one, and select your UEFI USB drive. So this one is mine here. So this is gonna allow us to boot from our boot disk that we created on our Mac. So press return on your keyboard to select that option. All right, so now we can go over to save and exit and then press the up arrow to save and exit setup, press return, and then press return on yes. Our first boot from USB. Now I've been saying press return this whole time, but it's actually enter for Windows users. You're probably wondering, where's this return key you speak of? But you should see this on your next boot. You wanna use your right arrow key to go over to options and press enter on your keyboard to open up the options panel. Press your down arrow key once to select boot args and press enter on your keyboard and then delete everything in the boot args section. Now we wanna type in NV, like NVIDIA, NV underscore disable equals one. All right, and then press enter on your keyboard and then press your down arrow all the way to where it says <laughs> return and then press enter on your keyboard. So now we can just select the external drive and press enter on our keyboard to boot using our boot disk that we created on our Mac. Now this portion of the tutorial will take a little while as well. So again, it's just one of those points where you have to exercise a little patience, but it doesn't take too long. You can see the loading bar here. Hopefully if everything goes right, it's going to boot up into the Mac OS X installer interface and we can configure our hard drive and then start our installation of OS X. All right, so there we go. All right, so now it is, well, <laughs> almost there, not quite yet, but it is coming. There we go. Format disk and install OS X. The first thing you wanna do is to select where it says use English for the main language and then click the little right arrow button. And now at the top of the screen, you wanna select utilities, disk utility. Stop me if this looks familiar. <laughs> All right, so now we wanna select our internal drive this time and then we wanna click where it says erase. And now we wanna give it a name. So we're gonna call it Macintosh space HD and then click the erase button. Obviously you wanna make sure this is a blank disc, probably the one that you purchased for your Hackintosh build, and then click done. So now we can close out of disk utility and now click continue on the installation screen. Click continue again, click agree, select your disc Macintosh HD, and then click continue. And now it's gonna say, well, about 13 minutes remaining. And this obviously is gonna take 
close to 13 minutes. I have sped this up a little bit so you're not waiting too long, but I didn't want to just completely skip it or rush through it so you would have at least some sense of the entire install process. So again, just be patient for this portion of the tutorial. At this point, we're actually at the home stretch, so just let the install proceed. Okay, so our install is almost completed. Now it's complete, just click the restart button. And now we can boot OS X from disk. But before we boot up, we wanna go back into our options. So use your right arrow key on your keyboard and then press enter on options. And then use your down arrow key, press enter on boot args, delete everything in there. And then again, we wanna type in nv underscore disable equals one, press enter and use your down arrow key to highlight return at the very bottom of the screen, and then press enter again on your keyboard. Now we wanna select HFS and then press enter on our keyboard. HFS is an acronym for Apple's file system. Now this portion is really significant because you're actually booting OS X directly from the hard drive or the solid state drive, hopefully. So the point is, is that this is the real deal. This is a significant portion of this tutorial and we are almost complete with our installation. We just need to wait a little bit longer for OS X to continue booting, and then eventually we're gonna be able to configure OS X. So the first thing you wanna do is click continue when you select your country, and then choose your keyboard layout, click continue, select your network, your Wi-Fi network. I'm just gonna type in my Wi-Fi password here, and then click continue and it will connect to the Wi-Fi network. Now with Hackintosh, there's a lot of options for Wi-Fi. Some things to consider will be found in the post on 9to5Mac. Select don't transfer any information now and click continue. Enable location services if you wish and click continue. And then select don't sign in and click continue and click skip. You can do that later if you wish. Click agree, click agree. Put in your full name, you don't have to. You can put your nickname in. Then put in a password. This is for your account, your user account on OS X and click continue. All right, so now just uncheck the first checkbox and that will uncheck the other one by default. Click continue and now it's setting up your Mac. So we are definitely in the home stretch now, folks. Eventually we're gonna see the OS X desktop. Now the keyboard assistant is easy. Just click continue and then press the keys to the left and to the right of the shift keys on your keyboard and click done. Configure multi-beast. Now let's open up our USB drive that we created on our Mac. It's called boot in my example here. So just double click that and locate the multi-beast folder, open that up and then double click on multi-beast and then click open. And let me take a second. All right, now click where it says quick start in the upper left hand corner, select UEFI boot mode and then go to drivers and for audio, Select Realtek, press the disclosure triangle, and then click where it says ALC892. Now this is assuming you're using the motherboard that I recommended. Uh, otherwise, you, you're gonna have to find out which one you need to use. And the same thing goes for all these options here, but with 
this setup, I find that the only thing that I needed to configure was the audio, so that's kind of cool. And then click bootloaders, make sure Clover UEFI boot mode is selected. Click build and make sure under select install drive Macintosh HD is selected. Click install, click agree, put in your administrator password, then click install helper, and then it will go through installing everything that we selected in MultiBeast. Now I alluded to this fact earlier, if you're using all the components that we used in our post, then you can follow this to a T. But again, if you're using different motherboards or different, um, I don't know, whatever the case may be, network cards or whatever, um, you may need to change up some things and some settings. So just keep that in mind. It's not gonna be necessarily a one-to-one -one comparison if you're using different hardware. And that's okay if you're using different hardware, that's the point. Uh, but uh, I wanted to show you this particular build, how easy it was with this hardware selection that I chose. So we are complete. You can just close out of MultiBeast and let's go on to the next step, and that is installing NVIDIA drivers. So again, we wanna open up our boot USB drive that we created initially, and then we wanna find the web driver. So we just wanna double click on that, and then click where it says continue, continue, agree, install. And then put in your administrator password, then click install software or press return, and then click on continue installation, and this is gonna go through the installation. It'll take just a second. And this is installing the drivers that are needed to actually run your GeForce GTX 970 or whatever video card you selected. This will allow it to be compatible with OS X. Uh, so this is definitely a necessary step to take. All right, so we should be completed. So we are. So now we wanna click the restart button and that will restart our installation of OS X. So ladies and gentlemen, can you believe it? Our Hackintosh build is completed. Don't believe me? Well, just press enter on HFS. No options, no boot arguments needed. And you're gonna see that OS X boots up like normal with everything ready to go for the most part. There may be still some other little small details you need to configure. Uh, but if you're using all the hardware suggested here, most things should work. Are you gonna have some issues obviously with uh, handoff and continuity support? Uh, you're gonna actually need to buy a specific type of Wi-Fi adapter with a specific type of chipset in order to make continuity features work. But everything else for the most part should function fairly well. And as you can see here, I'm able to go to the internet. I'm able to open up nine to five Mac. So folks, this is a pretty solid build. Now we're finished. We can just pop out our USB boot drive and we're good to go. So ladies and gentlemen, again, this is a Hackintosh build that is technically capable of running an Oculus Rift. It does meet Palmer Lucky's uh, minimum system requirements, I guess you could say, because it has that GTX 970 in it. So this is a pretty powerful machine. Of course, you could always dual boot Windows on it as well and get even more out of it so you can run games to your heart's content. Um, but the point is I wanted to create a Hackintosh that would be able to technically run an Oculus Rift and drive an Oculus Rift from a hardware perspective. And I think we were able to do that. So ladies and gentlemen, let me know what you guys think down below in the comments section. This is Jeff with 9to5Mac.